This is the Sattler Five. A kiss, a long embrace, a fond farewell should be personal. That's why personal funerals allow you to remember the life of your loved ones in a way that truly reflects their individual character. It's the difference that makes every goodbye unique. For more information about planning a special goodbye, visit personalfunerals.com.au because every goodbye is different. This is the Sattler Five. to do with funerals and you know we try and demystify the funeral pro process but personalized do a lot more don't they uh, they do a lot of community work they do a lot of things that uh, assist the the general public in other ways can you tell us a little bit about some of those things it's, a, it's really amazing what we do and I'm very proud you know, to be associated with Perslow's in the way that the community tends to rally together and one of the best mm. ways that we can get to know the community is by looking at ways of being able to support them. Uh, this this week we've launched the Anglicare Blanket Appeal mm -hmm. and where we use all of our funeral homes as collection centres. And as the um, as we've done you know now for about four or five years, but what we're also doing is every blanket that somebody donates, we're going to match that and go and buy a brand new blanket and, mm. and provide that to Anglicare for the homeless as well. Right. The, the real real good things that have come from, you know, the Anglicare Blanket Appeal over the, the last few years, we've collected, you know, thousands upon thousands of blankets. A really great story, last year we had one of a gentleman in Mandra come in with um, 10 brand new sleeping bags that he had bought from BCF next oh, door. How fantastic. You know, and, and we were able to take those directly out and give them to people, you know, in the community that, that day. So it was a it was a real good feel good story. Mm, absolutely, um, and of course it's uh, it, it's um, one of those things that people don't hear about the sort of things that you know w that you do for the public. But there's all sorts of other things as well, aren't there? That you've done for a lot of years. Yeah, we we do things you know very regularly. We've very strong in the Lions Eye for Sight program mm. where people donate old glasses that have been um, left in their drawer mm. for, for years and years and they've, um, they, we bring, they bring them in, we donate them to Lions mm. and we've sent hundreds of thousands of pairs of glasses overseas for third world countries. You can imagine if somebody has not been able to obtain employment because they can't see and then they're mm. given the gift of sight. Yeah, and those type of things. So, as a lead on from that, we then started looking at hearing aids. So we've worked with the Lions Hearing Centre and collecting mm. old hearing aids and using our funeral homes as collection points for those. Wow! And once again, thousands and thousands of hearing aids that have been sent to people overseas to be mm. able to help them. And you know, even if there's local people here recycling them, you know, so that they're not going for that extra cost. Mm. Mm. That's extraordinary. I mean, what a great uh, uh, public uh, response you get from these sorts of things. I think that going back to the story of the the guy that bought the five brand new sleeping bags. What a, what an amazing thing to do! I mean, it just shows the generosity of of people, uh, particularly when they've got a means of actually having someone collate and collect and and then distribute. You know, it's it's amazing. Australians are always very, very generous. They are, aren't you know, they? We're, we're lucky to be in the community that we're in. Mm. Um, but it's all sometimes how it's facilitated, mm. you know, how, how those charities go about being able to have collection centres and those type of things. And with us having funeral homes all, the, all across Perth, mm. Mm. it does give us the ability to be able to use those centres, yeah. you know, for, for the best. Yeah. And uh, is that something that you... Uh, as Perslow's publicise a lot? Do you, I mean, uh, you know, obviously you do it, but um, uh, how, how do people find out about that? Well, we, we programs do like this, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> programs like this, and we do media releases every now and again yep. about certain things that we're supporting and aspects that um, people can get involved in. Mm. Uh, you know, we always like people, and part of demystifying the funeral process is coming into a funeral home. 
because yes. it's, it's 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 not a scary place to be. In. No, no, it's actually quite tranquil and lovely. Yeah, if, you know, and people come in, and they drop off blankets, and they ask for a bit of a tour, and we can give them a tour of the facilities mm. and show them what goes on around the place, and look at our lovely chapels and and our boardrooms and those type of things. Mm. And I've mentioned a few times that you know we've got these lovely boardrooms and these facilities, so it doesn't have to be funeral related. And free of charge, if any of the community want to be able to or need a boardroom or need somewhere to be able to have a little bit of a service of some sort mm. or put a presentation on, they're welcome to be able to knock on our door and ask to be able to use the facilities and we can program them in around things. Mm. Mm. That's that's uh, quite unique, I would have thought, in in uh, in the community for to have that facility available to do that sort of thing. It's... Um, Quite remarkable that Perslow's, um, you know, put that in a place where people can uh, can avail themselves of it because it's really quite unusual. And it's no charge as well, you know. And it's even more unusual. You, you, go, you go and try and hire an office for a couple of hours to be able to have a meeting and it costs yeah, you a fortune. it does. And sometimes you just need that facility to be able to... Yeah, know. all be in one place for in a, in a quiet place for a while, yeah. Exactly. So yeah, very community minded, very um, uh, uh, you know an integral part of the community. You know, it's quite quite uh, refreshing to see. You'd be surprised at some of the things that we sponsor. You know, we're very involved with things like the Italian clubs and mm. Portuguese clubs, and some of these clubs which have been struggling over the years that need some assistance. We we get in there and support those communities. Mm. And we support a lot of local junior football. Uh, we sponsor a couple of waffle clubs. Uh, we sponsor some soccer clubs. Mm. Obviously, bowling clubs would come to mind for a lot of people yes, when it comes yeah. to the funeral homes. But it, with it, without the support of sponsors, you know, the, a lot of these groups struggle mm. to be able to keep themselves viable. Yeah, and um, look, I, I guess it's all part of, um, as you've said before, it's all part of getting the name out there and really uh, reinforcing the fact that. You know, a funeral home is is part of the community. I mean, that that has to be, doesn't it? Everybody's going to need one at, sooner or later. I always say it's better to know a funeral director when you don't need one than to not know <laughs> one when you do. Well, so, I'm so pleased that I know you. <laughs> it, it's it's nice to have a familiar face when something like that mm. happens, and we encourage all of our staff to be community focused. Do you? Um, one of the first things that I ask when I'm even doing interviews is. What do you do in your community? Or if we were to give you the ability within the community to be able to, you know, really go out there and make a difference, what would you do? Mm. And for some people it's a tough question. And for others they come back with a myriad of different answers mm. or as soon as they start they see all the good things that we do and they yeah. they come up with different ideas. Mm. I was only with a couple of the staff on the weekend and, you know, they were talking, how can we support the homeless? Well, I've got them more involved with the blanket appeal, and mm. you know we can do things like use our facilities as a soup kitchen and bits mm. and pieces if we need to, mm. you know, or want to. So ask them to come back to me with some thoughts rather than me having to do all the creative. Mm. And and they already have come back this week with, mm. with some things that they want to be able to do. That's remarkable. I, it's it's a side of of the fu- a funeral service, you know, that that I've not I'm, I've not heard of before and that's just fantastic um and so the, the staff as a group uh decide what they're going to do to assist uh, or do they get on board with the other things that you do like the blanket appeal and so on well they get on board with all the things that we we put forward but mm. we ask them to also put themselves forward mm. as to what they want to be able to do mm. and you're going to get a lot more satisfaction from staff doing community work if they're doing things that they actually enjoy yeah, and and as part of uh, as part of their employers' activities as well, I would have thought would have made them feel much more part of the of the uh, the process. Very much so. Mm. And if staff want time off to be able to go and do something charitable, we're we're first to put our hands up and mm. say, well, okay, if you're going to go and do the, you know, the knitting. You know, mm. with with the local Anglicare group and supply extra blankets yes, on, on a day yes. where they have a knitathon. Yes, then. By all means, you go and knit for the day. Yes, that's you know. right. That's that's really fantastic. And as a consequence of that, I mean, there's obviously a benefit for Perslow's in there in that you're 
be seen to be supporting uh, these community uh, projects and one thing or another, and certainly with the way that you allow your staff to participate in those sorts of things. And so you're part of it. And so when the when the time comes, you know, that's, that's the name is there, isn't it? It is. And it, you've also got familiar faces within the community. Mm. So, you know, you, it's amazing the amount of times you just walk through the shopping centre and people have been or attended a funeral or you've helped right. them and they'll just stop you and say hello and want to be able to have a chat. And by being part of the community and having that familiar face, mm. it makes things a lot easier for when, for people when something does happen. Yeah. So it's very important for us to be able to make sure that you know, we're, we're focused on what's happening in our local areas and in mm. our local communities and support them. Mm, mm. One of the things that we're just about to launch, you know, in the next coming months is Community Coffee. And it's called Community Pod. Okay. And we've been working with um, Mark Grogan and Ros Worthington. Ros is the you know, last year's Community Awards mm-hmm. winner um, in putting together you know, that at all our funeral homes, a percentage of every cup of coffee that we serve and we put out goes to charity. Uh, For the first couple of months, we're going to be supporting Organ Donation Mm -hmm. Australia and then we're going to be able to say to our staff after that, you know, you choose from the charities for what we've raised this month right? and, you know, what you want to be able to support. Mm. And there's a myriad of charities that, you know, um, are struggling. Mm. and could do with just that little bit of extra financial assistance. Yeah, yeah. So if we think globally, you know, we can make a difference in a lot lot better way mm. and we can get a lot of other businesses, big businesses on board. So the thing is they get their coffee slightly cheaper from a, a, a very famous Australian roaster mm. who's on the judging panel internationally. Right. And you get it 10% cheaper than what you can get it from most suppliers. Mm. And then on top of that, 10% goes to charity. Fantastic. So it's a no-brainer, really. Yeah. It really is. It's not costing us any more to be able to really yeah. give back and support the community. What an extraordinary initiative as well. I mean, that's really, really very cool. Very cool indeed. So, so it, I, I love these type of things, and I love being yeah. able to get involved with, you know, people that are going to make a difference in people's lives. And Ros Worthington is one of those, so she's she's a real gem. She's a dynamo, isn't she? Oh, a million miles an hour. <laughs> You know, she ma- she makes me tired just listening to her sometimes. <laughs> she's she's got so much going on and uh, an amazing worker for uh, for community. There's, it, it just seems that she's devoted her entire life to it. It is, and while there are lots and lots of people out there to, who who do a very very similar thing, there's nobody I know with the amount of energy she's got that no you know, just can go in day in day out. It's quite intimidating, it. really. <laughs> she. Because yeah. you just wonder where she gets it from, but yeah, look, congratulations to uh, to Ros. I mean, and and certainly for all of the things that she does, not just with with Burslow's, but but all of the things she does, because she's a tireless worker, and you know, it's it's wonderful that she lives here in Perth. It is. So by surrounding yourself with good people like Ros is what we really achieve, mm. and what we try and do, and it helps us be creative with how we support the community. Mm. You know, and if we're going to spend an advertising dollar, we'd like to be able to find a way that it's going to actually benefit people mm. and benefit the community Indeed. or create networks or relationships and those type of things. So it's, mm. yeah. it's a benefit for everybody concerned. It, it certainly is. And, um, of course, uh, some of the other things that you do, you uh, I saw one of your Facebook posts, one of uh, that you gave free water to uh, people attending the football match on Saturday, I think it was. It is, yeah. Every every home game this this season, we're going to be out front of our new funeral home on Townsend Road, which Mm. is about 100 metres or so away from the the main gate at Subiaco. Mm. And as the people come through, they've generally had a few beers and bits and pieces, so get them a little bit rehydrated, give them Mm. some free water, and, you know, they can then pop back after the game if they're still thirsty and (laughs) get some more. But that's, that's just... You know, it gives us a lot of different chats that we have in I'll, front of the funeral home I'll with a lot of people. Just a yeah. And you've probably heard all the lines that they drop on you, I suppose. Oh, every line. <laughs> <You know. laughs> and do you get a lot of people through there to uh, to avail themselves of that of a generous um, litre of water or whatever? You oh, give a them? couple of thousand a game. A you know, couple we, of thousand, we, really? We, we can't keep up with getting you know all, all the water into chillers and all the rest of it because we want them to have cold water, obviously. Yeah, sure. So. 
you know, we've got buckets and buckets and buckets of ice and water and, you know, mm. people running backwards and forwards loading them up so people can take them with them as people are getting off buses. Yeah. All those type of things. We stand there with a carton of water and give everybody a, a yeah. bottle of water. Yeah. My, my daughter's in Girl Guides. So for Anzac Day, we got um, a whole pile of Anzac biscuits and mm. she was giving them out as we were giving water oh, out. How fantastic. And, you know, in support of the Girl Guides, mm. we're going to be – They've started their biscuit drive, so over the next few weeks we'll be giving out free Girl Guides biscuits mm. and bits and pieces as well in front of the funeral home. Sensational. And your staff obviously get involved with that as well? They do. Oh, you know, um, you know they, it's like they don't go home very often. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to ask whether they do ever go home, but, I mean, isn't that fantastic that they're so supportive of the initiatives that you guys, or that Perslow's put forward? Uh, and they support those, and uh, I mean, I think that's outstanding. You must have a a fantastic group of people that work uh, work for you. We've got amazing staff. Mm. We we hire on emotive reasons. Mm. Majority of the time, we want people that are caring, compassionate, um, also you know able to really get to know people and be genuine in what they do. Mm. And look, if our staff don't agree with something that you know we're proposing. They'll they'll certainly jump up and down. They'll and have a they'll, chat. They'll, they'll tell us exactly what they feel. <laughs> well, that's good. And we we encourage that. Mm. You know, so we want we want our staff to be part of the the team mm. and the family, um, and to be able to continue on with the great work that they do, not just in funerals but in in their lives. Mm. And it changes their lives, their family, and the people around them. And in turn, that changes our community. Mm, mm, that's that's amazing stuff because that carries forward into when they're dealing with your, you know, on the on the serious side of things when they are dealing with uh, a bereavement and and uh, organising and arranging, you know, services and and so on. That 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 empathy goes forward, doesn't it? Because I mean, if they're prepared to do the sorts of charitable works and get involved in community projects they're obviously caring and empathetic people um they would fit it would be a very good fit with their day job wouldn't it yeah, very much so and they're very genuine mm. you know they're very genuine in what they do on yeah day-to-day -day basis yeah yeah so well that's that's fantastic because people do have a habit of actually seeing through anybody that really is is putting it on don't they they can see through. They pick them a mile. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you, you know it if you're going through the markets that you're going to get <laughs> yes, you know, seconded by somebody doing something. But, yeah, you know, we want people to have that rapport with us from that first telephone call. Yes. Yeah. From the moment that they ring through and they, they've they suffered a loss mm -hmm. and they need somebody to follow them through. And we've got a very unique model that when, you know, the first person you speak to is generally the same person who will carry everything through from the moment of sitting down with the family to being there on the day of the funeral mm. to that after call, mm. you know, that care that we provide after the service. Mm. Mm. And therefore, it's that rapport and that familiarity that really assists people, you know, in their grieving, know that there's somebody there for them if they just want to pick up the phone 24 hours a day. Absolutely. And I think the dealing with the same person all the way through is such a good idea because, you know, you avoid that thing we all dread and that is having to go through the same story again and again and again because you're dealing with different people mm -hmm. that's a fantastic idea to have somebody that's dedicated to to that person as a as a client as, as somebody that you're providing a service for that they they feel as though they are uh, somebody that is cared about definitely so mm. So, you know, it's it's the old adage, I guess, that, you know, if you provide service and a, and a level of care that you also get the ability to be able to service that whole family in the future. Yeah. And to be able to make sure that it's not just that particular funeral service that you're looking after. Mm. That mm. is the future generations that you're also looking yeah, after. Yeah, and, and it makes them feel as though they're somebody unique, isn't it? It's like, you know, you really do care about their needs and you care about them and their families and uh, you care enough to assign somebody to look after them and well, be there for them. Every every person is different mm. and every goodbye is different. Yeah. So that's important too. It is Keep indeed. Keep in the back of our minds. 
indeed. Daniel, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, I've learned a great deal today about what Perslows do outside the, the funeral business, and it's you're to be congratulated for that. It's fantastic. All right, it's always great having a chat. More on The Sadler Files very shortly. This is The Sadler Files.